Have you ever thought, if I had a nightclub that fit into my pocket, I would have everything I wanted in life? Well, in May of 2004, Nokia had the phone for you. This is the Nokia 3220B, a phone that is basically the epitome of a nightclub in your pocket. They called it maybe the first dancing phone, but it was a phone that had so many crazy firsts in it, and all of those firsts were overshadowed by the fact that it's got lights all the way around it. Flashing LED color changing lights. Let's jump in. So like I said, this is the Nokia 3220B. The B is the North American model. In other countries, it was sold as the Nokia 3220. The B actually has more onboard memory as well, which is insane because the 3220B already has major memory issues. And that was known back in the day, the 3220 would have been even worse. So. 128 by 128 resolution screen. It's a very small, very square screen with an incredibly low resolution, a resolution that's even lower than the built-in camera. This is one of the later model Nokias, so it has a VGA camera, which is obviously pretty cool, 640 by 480 resolution, but the display can't even show the pictures that it can take in that what is today considered a horrible resolution. I mean, if you've looked at a VGA picture lately, it looks like this on a normal screen. On this, compared to the screen on the phone, 640 by 480 would be like that big by that big, bigger than the entire phone, almost in resolution. This beast only weighs 85 grams, which is very impressive. Uh, it definitely feels great in your hand, solid build quality, you, just like a Nokia, you can expect it to be very reliable. It can probably get hit by a semi and survive with no issues. It's got a screensaver, interesting. This was obviously on T-Mobile, it's got a T-Mobile background, and the screensaver that just popped up was also T-Mobile. I've got the belt clip here. You couldn't have a phone in the 2000s without your belt clip. You had to show it off on the outside of your pants, of course, especially this phone, because if it rings while it's on your pants, you get to like show off your nightclub to everybody that that's around you, I guess. It also has the typical Nokia Express on covers. This is on a factory cover, and honestly, it's so new, it still has the removable plastic on it. You know what? Let's just do the peel. Ooh, right out of 2004. Obviously, I'm not doing like an original unboxing, but that is super nice to have one that is this clean. I mean, this close to being completely original. And now the camera will work much better because it's not sitting under some distorted plastic. Again, express on covers so you could change the entire look of the phone quickly. And there were some very crazy express on covers that helped this phone do lots of things that were absolute industry first. I mean, this is a groundbreaking phone and everything that was groundbreaking about it was overshadowed by some lights on the side and the fact that it was basically the light up sketchers of the phone world. One of the really cool things was the express on covers. Obviously the front and the back, they come off and change. And if you change them to one of the cool Nokia covers, it became the first NFC enabled mobile device in the world. I think Nokia kind of put some asterisks on there by calling it the first NFC enabled mobile device. If you had that Nokia express on cover on this phone, you could literally tap to pay with this phone in 2004. It was November, 2004 when that was released, but still absolutely crazy. Think about how old this phone is. We're talking like 18 years now, and you could do mobile payments. That's a technology that's just become very widespread in the 2020s. You actually see it everywhere now. Nokia had it forever ago. There was another Express on cover. You could slap on the back of this thing, and if you shake it through the air like this, it would write messages in LEDs in the air, like those old spinning clocks that went like that, or you know the fans that spin around and scroll LED messages. You could do that with this phone, just waving your phone around and getting messages written in the air. Truly an expression of your personality. That's what this phone had to be. Again, groundbreaking features, the first mobile XHTML browser on this phone, a POP3 and IMAP email client on this phone, a phone you would think it was just like a toy, but it was groundbreaking and it was all overshadowed by the fact that they put four blinking lights around the phone. So the 3220 was powered by the Nokia Series 40 operating system. An operating system was in a lot of these feature candy bar phones. It ran on 4.5 megabytes of memory, which is dismally small. I can't imagine you can take too many pictures with that VGA camera with your four megabytes of memory. It supported GPRS and edge data. So it was probably 
sort of quick for its time period, but people have said the browsing was dismal. Obviously, I have no way to test that now. There's no built-in Wi-Fi, but I mean, it makes sense. It was super old and probably modem slow. Speaking of modems, you could attach it to your computer with Nokia's pop port connector right there on the bottom. It charges off a small barrel adapter there. Pop port was very unfortunate. I'm sure it worked great for its time, but something we're all happy is gone today. There's one more thing I should mention when you're trying to express your personality with this phone. The back of this is actually clear plastic, and if you pop it off, these are holographic inserts. The phone supposedly came with like nine of them or something like that, and one that was a stencil, so you could create your own, and you could swap out these holographic inserts to pictures or whatever you wanted to help express your personality without having to buy a complete set of Express On covers. So it's time to get into the menus on the 3220 and show you guys really what this phone is all about. You've got a couple buttons on here, a four-way D-pad that you can also press in on for enter, your typical 12 buttons on the keypad there, and four more buttons around the D-pad with, you know, select, back, hang up, and answer call. We're gonna jump right into the menu here. You've got messages for SMS and MMS. It would support MMS up to 100 kilobytes, and call log, contacts, settings, gallery, media, organizer, IM, applications, and services. Services definitely looks like the web browser there. Uh, we'll start with messages. Obviously there won't be much to see there. We've got the usual old school message menu in here. Create message, inbox, outbox, sent items, saved items, voice messages, service commands, delete messages, message settings, message counter, and that's really it. Message counters were a big deal back in the day when you were paying per text message. Go to, shortcuts there for alarm clock and some profiles like normal, silent, inbox, ring volume, voice recorder, T-Zones, T-Mobile thing there, more wallpapers, obviously all the downloads there. Shortcuts to all the things that they expected you would be using a lot. There's another shortcut to the T-Zones on the other side. Obviously T-Mobile needs their own shortcut to spend money with them. Camera, let's go ahead and take a picture. So uh, you have to move your hand all the way down the phone to use the camera, but you can see the camera is on. We're gonna take a picture of the little, the studio light here. This is a bad picture. I'm telling you guys already. There's a picture, it's image 05. I don't know if you can see it. If you can, it looks rough. There, it's just blown out. It took a picture of the light bulbs, but not a great camera. Obviously we did say it's VGA. So now let's head into the gallery and check out some of the ringtones. So we're gonna head to tones, opening folder, and the tones are really, I mean, the selling point for this phone. Everybody wants to see the animations with the lights and the vibrate and all of that. It all ties together to create the nightclub. So let's get right into it. I'm gonna show you guys a few of these. This is Acceleration, the first one. All right, all right. On to the next one. Play applause. It says a pulse, though. That one's pretty cool. There's a lot of LEDs in there. All right, one more, and then we might make a second video going through all of them. That one really builds. Well, there you go. That is a few of the ringtones and the multi-zoned LED lighting and the built-in vibrate. These are only like 16 voice MIDI tones on this phone, but with the vibrate and all of the lighting, it seems incredibly exciting. Plenty of phones were playing full MP3 ringtones at this point. This phone can actually play MP3s, but the ringtones are all just old school MIDI. Let's see what happens when we open up the web browser here. GPRS connection not available. Let's see if there's any bookmarks in here. Uh, they're all T-Mobile bookmarks. Obviously it wants to set all those, so you uh, get sucked into the ecosystem. 
This was definitely before we could do whatever we wanted with our phones. Another super impressive fact about the 3220 was it could also record video with that little bitty VGA camera. I'm sure the video resolution was even lower and it couldn't record very long, but hey, that's still pretty cool. And you'd have to hook it up to your computer or something to get that video off there, or maybe send it as MMS because there's no SD slot in this thing. One more important thing to note, if we jump into the applications menu here and go to the games, this was one of the first phones with what I assume is an accelerometer. They've always said it was a tilt sensor, but it was probably a multi-axis accelerometer. So you can go to select game, it's opening. It's a very slow phone. You've got Simon, Simon Says, Demo Blackjack, Bejeweled, and Club Pinball. I'm gonna go ahead and open up Club Pinball. We'll see if it runs. Obviously an old school Java app, still starting up. Hey, look at that, we got beats too. Truly a club in your pocket. And some of these games actually worked with the lights that were built into the phone. So we're gonna go ahead and open up a new game, press five to shoot. Can I tilt the board or something? Hey, look at that, it does work with the lights. Oh, huh. You can see the lights working with the game. No idea how to use the flippers, but hey, built-in games with tilt sensors and integration with all of the awesome LED lights. Before we wrap this up, we're gonna go ahead and pull the cover off of the phone. The battery is swelling up, which is unfortunate. This is the clear back right here. You guys can see right through it. And this is the holographic cover there with the Nokia logo in it. Like I said, you could change those out to whatever you wanted. They just sit in there. So very simple. And the battery is a lithium ion. Very cool. BL5B, 3.7 volts. I think it was 700 milliamp hour or something like that. Unfortunately, it is swelling. And that's the reason the phone popped right apart. And there is a generic SIM card in there too from way back in the day. No printing on the SIM card at all. Underneath it, you can see another Nokia logo. Uh, we'll pop the front off too. I think it should just come right off of there. There we go. Hey, look at that, the keypad falls out. So that is what the phone looks like without the keypad. It's got a little seal around the screen to keep dust out. Uh, I think that's the only real seal and the one on the camera there. Basically trying to keep everything protected so your phone works well and reliably. Oh, there's another dust seal on the uh, speaker there. But other than that, keypad falls right out. Backlight is down there underneath that plastic and you can get a good view of the skeleton of this phone. Nokia also went ahead and printed VGA on the additional little sticker there beside the camera, so you know what's up. They weren't gonna pass up the fact that this had a VGA camera, which was really honestly impressive for its time. So the front snaps right back on, put the battery in, and we will snap the back on, it goes in kind of like that, and then you just kind of work down it to snap it on. Oh, I missed one. After all these years, the battery still holds a charge, which I'm pretty impressed by. Uh, I do have the original Nokia 5 volt charger with its little barrel plug there. And honestly, it's been holding the charge for quite a while. That is the Nokia 3220B, an actual nightclub for your pocket. If that's what you wanted in life, like I said, this was your phone. That is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching Tech Throwback, and I can't wait to see you on the next one.